May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated if you're not already. You can't get this mask off of the microphone, so I'm sorry that you have to look at it. There we go. Oh, well. How about this? Christmas is this Friday. Can you believe it? Now, I've mentioned before that on Fridays, my family gathers via Zoom. Often my brother shares his screen and shows us pictures from our childhood, which means I have seen years and years of basically the same picture. It is of us kids wearing cozy bathrooms, sitting on the steps, waiting with eager anticipation from the moment when we can descend that last step and enter into a wonderland of Christmas. The moment when we could see the Christmas tree all lit up for the first time with mounds of presents underneath. Oh, how we eagerly awaited that magical moment. For we had spent weeks dreaming and hoping of what we would find. Our expectations had been given free reign. Expectations. This Advent we have been talking about hope, about living in hope. We explored God being the one, the promise of God's love, and today we explore the role of expectation in our quest for living a life based on hope. And today is the Sunday when we hear the news that Mary is expecting. How do you think she felt receiving that news? I bet she wished she had the book, What to Expect When You're Expecting. But thankfully, we can learn from the scripture what to expect during our season of expecting. And what we learn is to expect the unexpected. <laughs> Nothing in the birth narrative is expected. God turns our expectations upside down, inside out, and still creates miracles. Let's look at this narrative again. Sometimes it can be so familiar that we forget how scandalous it truly is. Okay, God is going to come into the world as a king. Yes, Jesus is going to be born into a royal family of noble birth, prestige, money, wealth. His mother will be a woman of means with a proven track record of success. And the family while they will reside in the center of the universe, the hub of culture. And of course, we know that none of that happened. Mary was an ordinary person, not royalty. A young girl living in an insignificant town in an unimportant province of the Roman Empire. Not the type of person you would expect to give birth to the Son of the Most High. Yes, she was legally married, but according to the custom of the time, Mary did not yet live with her husband, Joseph. And society would not have expected a baby to be born before the wife lived with a husband. Isn't it mind-blowing that everything that society says we should do, God did not do? And yet, out of that our Savior was born. I'm not saying that we should ignore cultural norms, but I am suggesting that our expectations should not be limited by them. And we're getting better at this. Girls can grow up to be teachers and nurses, and yes, even college football players. Folks are dropping out of the rat race and instead pursuing their passions. I was able to leave behind a lucrative corporate career and take a chance on ministry. I am so glad that Mary did not allow cultural limitations or expectations to limit her possibilities. Now, while our expectations can be limited by societal rules, other times they are limited by our own fears, our desire to stay safely in the known. We expect things to stay the same or be the way they used to be. 
to be reasonable, to be familiar. I can't imagine that Mary said, Woohoo! Let's have a baby before we live together. Ha, the Son of God, bring it on, Lord. I can be the perfect parent for this child. How many of us would have signed up to be the parent of the Prince of Peace? Now I know many of you have very special children. But imagine if they were God incarnate. Wow, you could so never swear again in your life. And think of the questions a young Jesus would ask at the dinner table. Good grief. I am so glad that Mary did not allow fear to limit her expectations. For whatever reason, sometimes our expectations are just too small, too limited. Is there a place in your life where you feel hopeless? Or maybe you feel a little less hopeful than you would like to? Take a look at your expectations surrounding that hope. Have you limited them in any way? For with God, nothing will be impossible. I remember speaking to a young man who was complaining that he really wanted God to help him become sober. But God hadn't taken away the desire for drink in him. He said he was beginning to, get to doubt that God really wanted him to be sober. And I simply asked him, God wants you to be sober. But the question is, do you want to be sober? Or just have a magic wand waved over you? Expect the unexpected. We've all heard that before. This is no surprise. But it is way more difficult to do than one might think. How can we imagine something that is beyond our imaginations because our expectations are bounded by many chains? The chains of culture, the chains of fear. But I think the lesson for today, the lesson that Mary teaches us, is to unleash our expectations, to hope wildly. If God could take an ordinary young girl in the middle of nowhere, and create the miracle of salvation, imagine what God can do in your life. Free you from pain, restore relationships, comfort you in peace, soothe your suffering, fill you with joy. Now you may ask, how do we do that? Now it's simple, though maybe not easy. Don't let your expectations be limited. Continue to remember that with God, nothing not only is, but as our text says, will be impossible. We humans have limits, but God does not. Frame your expectations not by your own potential, but by God's. Live in the expectation of God's unlimited possibilities. When we let our expectations roam freely, without limits, without earthly boundaries, without the chains of society expectations or our own fearful expectations, then we can have hope. Hope in something greater than us. Hope in the power of God to work in our lives in ways we could have never imagined. Hope that God can take our ordinary lives and create a miracle, too. May we be as little children sitting on the steps Christmas morning, waiting in expectation of God's wonder in our lives. May we live in hope. Amen. Please stand as you are able and join me in singing, We